Welcome to a special clicks tactics. Uh, I say this is a special clicks tactics because we're actually going to look at what uh, WizKids has revealed to be some of the changing rules for 2021, uh, beginning with the Wonder Woman set that's coming out soon. And uh, so starting here with Article Zero, released by WizKids uh, just a couple of days ago, actually, from recording this. Uh, I wanted to take a look at this section right here, the one that says more obvious low rarity figures. I have seen a lot of posts online um, and I kind of, you know, wanted to make this video to give you all different perspective on how to look at things because, uh, you know, sometimes when we get feedback, when we see changes like this, uh, and I know I've been guilty of this too, that we act like it's the end of the world. And I think this is one that I can actually cope with. And as a former competitive player, you know, what this means to me is that the, these lower rarity figures like commons and uncommons are going to be way more specialized. And I'm going to show you a couple examples here, what I think will look like, because in tandem with those comments that I see about, uh, you know, people not being too happy about these changes, and I don't blame you, change is never easy for anyone. I want to give you a different point of view because, uh, you know, the comments that I'm seeing right now is that... Uh, not too good news, right? We're not expecting great changes for the lower rarity figures like commons and uncommons. And like I was mentioning that, I do see that mentioned a lot in tandem with the Joker's Wild set because Joker's Wild set, in case you weren't around, it did have a lot of bland dials. Um, and here I'm going to show you just a couple to, to show you what I'm talking about. Very bare bones, uh, only two or three powers. Uh, some even if that, as you can see, you know, the Thanagarian here with only one special power. Um, and others, of course, being more colorful. Now, I wanted to take a look at a couple of them. And uh, the direction that I hope that WizKids is at least taking these uh, is this one right here. That uh, We're going to take a look at someone like Harley Quinn. She has stealth, combat reflexes, and perplex. That's it. No special powers, no traits, no range. That's it. Uh, now, obviously, a, a character like this would still make a great addition to a team. I wouldn't mind seeing more of these types of characters in a set. Uh, you know, specifically, you know, just looking at Harley Quinn, for example. Uh, she, okay, she has a nine attack. However, she has a Batman enemy team ability, so she can naturally already increase that attack value. She has Perplex, which is, you know, if she's not attacking, she's still contributing to the team. She has Stealth. Uh, so she's still blocking that line of fire. So you see those three powers in tandem. It's a great combination of powers plus the team ability. And if this is the direction that they're headed, I'm all for it, right? Uh, looking at another character with a blandish dial here, something like the Atom who has a great power set as well because these power sets combo really well together. Sidestep, no range, uh, 17 defense with combat reflexes and close combat expert. On top of that, he has the JSA team ability, so he can benefit of having a higher defense, so he'll stick around longer. Um, so what I'm trying to say is that, you know, I, this is a value for 25 points. Uh, it would make a great addition to a Justice Society team if you've got 25 points to spare. And I hope that this is what WizKids means, that this is the direction that they're taking, you know, the commons and uncommons. Uh, the lower rarity figures, as they say. What I don't want to see is this. Uh, someone like Sandman, who is a rare. And, I mean, he's not that great. I, lo I love to play the Justice Society. Uh, but I was very disappointed pulling this as a rare and seeing his dial. And just, <laughs> as you see right here, the top five worst pieces of the last de decade. Um, and <laughs> I wouldn't go that far, but uh, it's definitely... Not great, not great to see in the rare section. Um, so I hope that does stick to just commons and at most uncommons. So moving on, here we got article number one. You can see they're doing away with pushing damage, which I guess new players all around the world rejoice. I know that was a big deter to a lot of new players uh, over the course of my years of experience and teaching new players to play the game is that they were, you know, WizKids is right. Uh, new players don't like to take pushing damage. It seems uh, odd to them. I don't know why. It makes sense to me. But, you know, I'm just telling you off of my experience that, that what they're saying is unfortunately true. <laughs> People, uh, new players don't like to take pushing damage at all. Which is a shame because 
you know, as veteran players, we recognize that as kind of like a skill, right? It's a tactic that we learn how to use over time uh, and use to our benefit if we need to. What does this mean? This means that, of course, they have to change willpower and the way that works. So I would like to give some examples here on how big of a change this is. Uh, so let me get this set up. Uh, so let's take a look at willpower and how the new version of willpower is going to work. Uh, starting here with Jason Wingard from the Hellfire Club slash Brotherhood of Mutants slash a ruler. A character like this now actually stands to benefit a lot <laughs> from the new change to willpower. Let's just read the rule so we can be completely clear on it. At the beginning of your turn, you may roll a d6. So let's do that. I got a three, but let's change that to a six here for the sake of this. Uh, remove it five to six, remove an action token from this character. So, hey, what does that mean? It means that I get essentially gets like he rolls leadership on himself, right? Yeah, I just got to use him three times in a row, uh, possibly four, possibly five. If you keep, uh, if you got hot dice, I could see that happening on very rare occasions, but it can happen. Characters, you know, just also kind of looking at the point values uh, when we're talking about, you know, when they did away with Indomitable. Essentially, now every character with the standard damage symbol, like Black Panther here, uh, 65 points, I'm sorry, 60 points. No willpower, no Indomitable. That means if you were to take, uh, if you were to get, I'm sorry, not get take, if you were to get a second action token placed on him, after resolutions, you would need to deal him one clicking damage. That is no longer the case. As it is, now everyone will have the ability to get two tokens granted to them without taking pushing damage. I'm using Black Panther, uh, Black Panther here as an example because he's a common. And I just kind of want to compare how much characters like him stand to benefit from every character now being able to act, you know, two consecutive turns without taking a pushing damage. Um, we're going to compare him to someone like Agent Venom. Um, you know, just looking at the rarities, starting with the rarities. This here's a common, this here's an uncommon. This Black Panther has zero range, so that means he's got to make all his attacks up close. He has to make his way from one point all the way over here. If Agent Venom had the initiative, in other words, if he went first, he gets to take a shot, right? So that puts Black Panther in danger. And now, of course, you know, you have to debate, do I want to push him or not, right? Because now it's a kind of a risky attack. Uh, if you don't hit, you'll take that pushing damage. Now that's not really the case. That means that this Black Panther just gained a huge benefit of being able to act two consecutive turns without taking a pushing damage. That's huge for characters like that. Um, and there's a list of characters that, you know, you can just go through. Uh, then you realize that there's way more characters than you think that stand to benefit from this change. Um, and I could see that as a good thing because it makes to, it tends to make characters a little more viable. And maybe that'll shake things up, make... Add for more variety uh, to the metagame so it won't get stale. So, I again, I'm trying to look at the positive side of things, hoping to also just give you a different point of view. Let's look at uh, Franklin Richards. I wanted to use him as an example because the new willpower, combining that with Franklin Richards, do you know what Franklin Richards does? He has a trait that friendly characters with a Fantastic Four uh, keyword within four squares have the power cosmic team ability. The power cosmic team ability, of course, um, grants them uh, protected outwit and it gives them willpower. Now, what does that willpower mean? Uh, that means that Franklin Richards here, as long as he's within four squares of Ghost Rider, Black Panther, anyone else with the Fantastic Four keyword, they're going to have willpower. Let's say we're in this situation right here. 
Franklin Richards here is granting Ghost Rider and Black Panther the power cosmic. What does that mean? It means they get willpower. Uh, now, at the beginning of my turn, I get to roll that d6. And hopefully, hit that 5 or 6 to get that token off of them and keep them going. Um, I, like I said, it opens up a variety of things that, that uh, you normally wouldn't be able to do, which... Again, makes characters like this, like Ghost Rider, again, doesn't have any indomitable or willpower. It makes him so much better. Um, so I can't wait to see what other combinations we can think of. The next example I wanted to look at uh, was Great Size. We're going to look at Wendigo here. What we're focusing on is the giant size. Uh, as you can see that right there, he is a giant and of course being a giant grants him great size which is a rule that is also going to change or you know get updated uh, which is essentially the same thing that it does now except this character can use willpower which in the under the new wording means that it can try to remove those action tokens from itself so okay so uh wendigo here is a character that could you know stand to benefit a lot from this update and i'm sure every colossal will stand to benefit from this but i wanted to use wendigo here as an example uh because if you face the terror of wendigo uh you know starting at his 25 point line and uh having that trait that allows him to heal past this starting line with the ancient mystical curse uh wendigo here can become a terror right so he starts at that 25 point line right at the end of his dial um you're moving up the map. He's got zero range. That's fine. He gets in closer. And don't forget that willpower, you get to roll for that at the beginning of your turn. So you can even roll for that before you make that charge. Hey, there you go. Got that token off. Because that's uh that's what they have now that's uh that's pretty good that's not a bad trade-off for being to able to act every turn uh and the fact that it's supercharged willpower because it succeeds on a three to a six you know whereas before if i wanted to act again with wendigo give him that second action token uh he's got indomitable so he's fine this would be then this the following turn if i wanted to use him again uh you know it kind of uh offsets the steel energy that he normally you know because of having to deal with the old colossal stamina uh you'd have to of course click him right that one unavoidable damage that he would have to take for using colossal stamina but under the great size here uh that's no longer the case that means that you know that when he uses that steel energy he's actually going to heal slightly more uh, than he normally would be able to under the old uh, colossal size penalty uh, team abilities here we're going to look at uh, claw out of all the characters i could pick why claw because claw not only has the masters of evil team ability he also has a power set of which uh, WizKids has announced they're doing, their benching is a term they're using. Uh, a lot of the powers that he has, uh, like Range Combat Expert, Pulse Wave, what's a character to do uh, like Claw without those powers uh, to, for him to deal that damage? I'm hoping he'll figure something out for that. Uh, but for now, let's look at his team ability. So because, of course, they did away with Colossal Stamina, they had to do away with the Masters of Evil team ability. And now uh, it's not great because it doesn't benefit or, you know, a character like the Claw, the Claw, a character like Claw can't really benefit from that uh, because it says when an adjacent friendly character makes a close attack, modify the target's defense minus one if the target is adjacent to this character. So that means that they both have to be adjacent to that character. Uh, so let's bring Ghost Rider back in here. Put Spider-Man 2099 here. He's got, he's a wild card. Uh, he can help him out. Now in this situation, character like Claw, you don't want him to be close. A character like Claw doesn't want to be adjacent 
to other characters because he's a ranged attacker. So not too thrilled about this team ability itself, but it's not a bad team ability for the close, uh, for the melee characters, for the characters that need to get up close, have zero range. Um, so it's good, not great. And what has to happen is the adjacent friendly character needs to make an attack, which let's say that Spider Man 2099 making an attack against Ghost Rider. And uh, this character right here, Claw, has to be adjacent to the target as well. That way they can both get that. Uh, that way they can benefit off their team ability and Ghost Rider will get that minus one to his defense. Finally, the list of powers that WizKids is benching. Leap Climb, Super Strength, Willpower, Earthbound Neutralized, Precision Strike, Pulse Wave, Battle Fury, Range Combat Expert, Perplex, Shape Change, Invincible, Force Blast, Hypersonic Speed, and Support. So a lot of powers being benched. Uh, one of the more perplexing ones to me, no pun intended, Perplex. Uh, even though Perplex was the one that hit me the hardest, uh, I still thought it odd that Super Strength being done away with because that's such a core power to a lot of characters um, that it doesn't make sense. Uh, well, I mean, I'm sure they'll figure something out, but like, you know, someone like The Thing, he's got two things going for him, right? Uh, his rock hard shell so he can take a hit and his super strength so he can take he can dish it right back uh, so it's interesting to see what it is they're going to do with super strength or how they're going to kind of compensate those characters especially considering a wonder woman set is coming up uh, i'm very interested to see how they're going to tackle that i hope if anything i gave you some food for thought uh something to think about regarding the new rules changes if you're a newer player you know just learning to play hero clicks and you're a little shook up about what's going on i don't blame you i've been there done that my best recommendation to you is to just write it out if you really like the game just write it out uh, decide once everything is completely revealed uh, to see whether or not you really actually want to stick around and continue playing that's what i've been doing and i've been hanging in there let me know what you think about the new powers powers and abilities down below in the comments. I'm uh, very interested to see to hear any other ideas or thoughts that you may have uh, that maybe I could put in a future episode as WizKids continues to roll the news out for any rules changes in the upcoming sets. Don't forget to like and subscribe. That way you're notified when the next episode of Casual Clicks Tactics goes live. And as always, thank you so much for watching.